We are jumping back on the foundation review bandwagon. I love filming foundation first impressions and you guys seem to enjoy watching them, I hope. Uh, but today, uh, I'm going to do something a little different. So I'm going to add an update at the end of the video once I've worn the foundation every day for a full week. Uh, so that way we can, we can kind of enjoy the format of the first impressions but also get a little bit more of a complete review. So, thoughts, questions, concerns. Do you love this idea? Do you hate this idea? Let me know down below. Today's contender is the Hourglass Vanish Seamless Finish Liquid Foundation. So I absolutely adore the, coming out, the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation. The liquid, ah! <laughs> this one has received some really mixed reviews online but we'll see. So for a little bit of context, here is what Hourglass claims about this foundation. The Vanish Liquid is a rich liquid formula, full coverage, requires just half a pump. I kind of wonder why didn't they just calibrate the pump to express less, but what do I know? Uh, weightless second skin finish that is long wearing, sweat proof, waterproof, and fade proof. So essentially, all of the things. Onto the application. Okay, I got you real up close here so you can see all of my pores and my dry patches and the application, but maybe we could, uh, we could just ignore my moustache. That'd be great. There are 32 shades in this line and I have two here. I've swatched them on my face. This is Bisque, the lighter one, and Linen. And I'm thinking between these two, I'm probably Bisque. My skin is moisturized with a basic moisturizer, but I will not be using a primer in this initial test. Um, I can, you know, experiment with that over the next week and update you, but for now I just want to see how it goes on bare skin. Very pretty glass bottle, if you care. I don't. I do care that it has a pump, that's wonderful. And the consistency is that of a liquid foundation. Who would have thunk it? I'm going to apply this to the right hand side of my face so I can give you like a little bit of a half half. Uh, so let's talk about skin type. Okay, so if you've, been, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you probably would have heard my constant constant whinging about my uber dry skin, super dehydrated. Well, I don't know, maybe the skin gods heard me because in the past few months, my skin has morphed into what I would describe as a normal skin type. You know, sometimes guys, sometimes at the end of the day, I have a slight sheen in my T-zone. I'm using a beauty blender here because nine times out of 10, that's just the tool that I prefer. Um, and I'm noticing already that this product sets so fast. Holy moly, you have to really blend quickly. Okay, that's one very light layer on this side of my face. I used a quarter of a pump maybe. Um, and I'd say that I'm getting pretty good coverage. I'm nearing a medium, perhaps not quite a medium at this stage. So let's see if we can just build that up in some areas where I have some extra redness, a little bit on my cheeks here, a bit on the nose. Yeah. That builds on itself really nicely. I used very little product to get that, you know, more medium plus coverage um, around my cheeks. So I'm going to agree with the claim that this is uh, at least a fuller coverage foundation. The full coverage, you know, it's not Marc Jacobs remarkable, um, but I definitely think you could get a very opaque coverage with this product. And I'm just going to finish off the rest of my face here. Just based on bisque alone, I mean, I don't want to speak for all of the shades, but I think that this uh, formula runs like a little bit darker than the stick foundation because bisque in the stick foundation is just a touch too light for me. And I would say that this is about the right depth. So that's kind of interesting. Just be wary when you're getting shade matched. So far, this is the, the foundation that Hourglass claimed it would be. Um, I used, I want to say less than a pump for my entire face, maybe not half a pump. That was a little bit optimistic. Uh, it feels really light, uh, lightweight on the skin. I got a great coverage, medium plus, and the finish I would say is a, a satin. So not dewy, not matte, nice in between. When I touch my face, there is a little bit of tackiness, but I can't help but think that that is maybe my skin hair because this foundation sets so fast. That's one thing that really stands out to me about it. I would say work in uh, zones so that you can blend before it sets. Okay, let's get that close up footage so you can really see this product on my skin. Um, at this stage, I'm liking it. Um, this to me is what I would describe as an evening foundation. So, you know, my skin looks perfected, but it looks like makeup. 
this is probably too makeup y for me to wear on like a more daytime basis. Although I will be wearing it during the day for the next seven days, but that's for science, that's for you guys. Another thing to know is that I'm already noticing that it's starting to kind of settle into the lines and folds of my face. So, especially around the crevice of my nose, I have a very deep nose crevice. Uh, of my existence and a little bit around the fine lines around my um, around my mouth so yeah that's all I've got to report so far a little bit makeup -y, a little bit settling but otherwise it's nice I will see you in a few hours we're back for our foundation check-in it's been around five hours uh, since I applied this foundation and I'm noticing two things at this stage so a this foundation has definitely oxidized a bit uh, it's gotten a little bit darker and a little bit warmer, I say. Um, and also, it's just looking a little bit, I don't want to use the word crusty, but maybe crusty is the right word, uh, around my mouth and my chin. It's just not sitting on the skin um, so nicely in that area. But otherwise, I applied a little bit of bronzer here. Um, over the foundation and I didn't set it with powder and it blended beautifully. It doesn't appear to be wearing away or getting oily or uh, you know looking worn in any other respect. So I'll be back again in a few more hours for a second check-in. I've been trying all day not to blow my nose. Don't judge me. Checking in on the Vanish liquid foundation at nine-ish hours after application and to be honest I'm pretty impressed with the longevity. This is a long wearing foundation. It still looks relatively fresh. Um, so I haven't got any fading or shifting. I don't look shiny. Um, perhaps the only things you can see is like flecks of mascara and also this uh, mark where my glasses sit. No foundation is gonna hold up against that. That is a tall ask. Really my only critique is that I, I'm still getting this sense that I'm kind of a bit cakey around the crevice of the nose and around the mouth. And when I flex like this, which is perhaps not something you do on a day-to-day -day basis, but when I test foundations, I do this. I feel like uh, the foundation is kind of cracking a little bit around my mouth. It's not moving with the skin. You know, I was thinking actually that this Vanish foundation does remind me a bit of the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation, which I actually did review. I'll link that on the screen. Um, they're, they're in a similar breed of foundation. So satin, uh, fuller coverage, evening uh, foundations. Although I will say that the NARS is a little bit more pliable and a little bit more flexible and it's less likely to do this kind of cracky thing around the nose and the mouth. In my NARS foundation review, uh, spoiler, spoiler, I gave that one a four out of five. Uh, so with that context in mind, I'm gonna give the Vanish Liquid Foundation probably like a 3.5 out of five at this stage. Um, and I still do prefer the, the stick, the Vanish Stick Foundation, that stuff is awesome. So over the next week, I'm going to experiment with different primers, different foundation uh, application tools. Uh, I'm going to try to mix in a drop of oil and all my other best foundation hacks to determine what works best. And I'll report back. Hello, darlings. I'm back. It's been a week of experimenting with the Hourglass Vanish Liquid. We've become very well acquainted. Uh, so here are just a few of my findings. I've managed to make this a science, there's a hypothesis, it's a lot, I know, I'm a lot. <laughs> I tried applying with a dense buffing brush um, and I actually preferred this outcome. My skin looked like skin, it, it just didn't look as makeup-y as it did when I used a sponge. I typically find that dense buffing brushes will shear out a formula and that was definitely the case here. So if you wanted a, a fuller coverage, really make the most of that coverage, I'd be using a sponge. Uh, and if you want a little bit more of a natural effect than buffing it in with a dense brush, that worked a charm. I tried a few different primers, uh, including my favorite Hourglass Veil smoothing primer, silicone primer, and to be honest, didn't notice any difference at all, no discernible difference. I did, however, notice a difference with the, where are you? The Marc Jacobs uh, Coconut Primer, which is kind of a hydrating, moisturizing primer, and the Hourglass Vanish Liquid, a lack, a match made in heaven. These two should be sold together. My skin looked, it still retained its satin finish, but it sat so beautifully on the skin, it didn't crack anywhere around the chin, it didn't get crusty, it didn't settle. Honestly, love this. 
I also tried mixing a drop or two of face oil into my foundation and this was a great foundation day. Like I was super dewy, veering on glossy uh, and it didn't collect or crack or get crunchy anywhere. So I really loved it. It does sheer out the foundation a little bit, FYI. I'm not suggesting that you go out and buy a luxury foundation with the intention of, of mixing and altering, but just sharing my findings. I saw on the Sephora US website that they recommend this for normal, combo and oilier skin types and I'm going to agree with that. I think this foundation is best suited to someone with an oilier skin who's looking for a fuller coverage and is seeking that really impressive longevity. This foundation fits the bill. However, if you have a drier skin type or significant areas of dehydrated skin, or perhaps you just don't like to see makeup on your face or foundation on your face, you prefer more of a, a second skin finish, I think, it, I think this is a safe skip. I think that there are other formulas on the market that are better geared towards that. Shall we talk about ratings? Yes, ratings. So I think I'm gonna stick with my initial rating of 3.5 out of five. There were some days I really loved wearing this foundation and I absolutely will wear it again. Um, on the days where I can maybe be bothered to do the little drop of oil or use a specific primer, I don't think it will become part of my high rotation everyday makeup um, because it's just a little bit more fiddly, I guess, to get it right on my skin type. If you have tried the Hourglass Vanish Liquid Foundation, then let us know what you thought of it in the comment section down below so that we can all have a read and be better informed. Uh, also, I need some inspiration. What foundation would you like to see next in this kind of first impressions plus update format? Did you like that? I liked that. I liked filming that. Anyway, I hope you're having a wonderful day, whatever it is you're up to. I just did this weird thing with my hands. Let's not talk about it. Uh, yeah, I'll see you soon.